ever noticed how most motivational or inspirational stories all start with tragedy? You know, the ones, the mediocre athlete slash couch potato with no future who manages to lose a limb in some horrific accident only to turn his life around and win all the medals at the Paralympics and become a national treasure. Or the dad who never so much as rounded up for charity at the grocery store, who ends up losing a child to a horrible disease and then becomes a philanthropist raising millions for charity. Maybe some of you know someone personally who's overcome a tragedy so great but turned out better for it on the other side. Like my grandma Dorothy. She managed to have eight relatively normal kids with a cigarette in one hand and a whiskey in the other. No one could convince her to quit. Until at 45, she had two heart attacks on the same day, coded on the table, only to come back to life, finally quit, and get to live another 50 years and meet every one of her great grandkids. Maybe some of you have experienced trauma so great that it fundamentally changed you at your core, hopefully for the better. When these major traumatic events happen in our lives, it's like the universe is screaming at us. It's sending us a wake-up call, a virtual kick in the pants, compelling us to take action. It's like the event itself disrupts the normal rhythm of our lives and shocks us into taking a different, oftentimes much better path. That's why so often after the pain of tragedy subsides, people are actually able to say it was the best thing that ever happened to them. Transformation from trauma. It's a classic story. But what happens if you never experience trauma? Or maybe you have in the past but never do again. What happens if you never have a near-death experience, a terminal diagnosis, or lose a loved one before their time? What happens if you're blessed to live your entire life without experiencing trauma so great that it kickstarts you towards any sort of transformation? What then? A few years ago, I knew that something in my life needed to change. I was a workaholic, entrepreneur with no boundaries, burning 60-hour weeks with three small boys and one on the way. I had convinced myself that I was doing it for them, that I was building something that they could be proud of, that no one would take care of my business the way that I would, that even if there was money to hire someone, there was no time to train them. I was, I was exhausted, I was miserable, and I was spiraling. But then one tiny little voice changed everything. I was leaving to go back to work one day, and I said, bye boys, I love you, I'll be home soon. And with all the snark of a teenager, my four and a half year old little baby angel of perfection muttered under his breath, yeah, right. Now under a lot of different circumstances, I may not have even heard him. I could have been distracted, my mind elsewhere, or I would have said something like, oh, you don't mean that, and off to work I went. But as I mentioned, I was pregnant, about a million months pregnant, very hormonal. So I heard him. His words hit me like a shot through my heart. I felt a weight in the pit of my stomach. I stopped dead in my tracks. I whipped around. I got down on his level, and I said, buddy, buddy. His name was actually Cooper, but we called him Buddy so much that he thought that was his name until he was about six. But that's a whole different story about my impeccable parenting for another time. I said, Buddy, you know I love you and your brothers more than anything in the world, right? And without even looking up from his toys, he said, Yeah, but you care about work more than us. Now, not an emotional person, I hardly ever cry. But when I was pregnant, whew, totally different story. Give me a soldier coming home in a coffee commercial, and I was a puddle on the floor. So on that day, in that moment, being that pregnant, his words hit me really hard. But I swallowed the lump in my throat. I gave him a big hug, kissed him on the forehead, got in my car, and then I bawled my eyes out the entire way to work. My mind swirled about all the ways I was a horrible mother, about all the ways I was letting them down, about the fact that, that I knew all of the strategies I was supposed to be using about time management and delegation and productivity, but I was ignoring all of them. <sighs> it 
It was that car ride on the way to work that I decided that everything was going to change. At the end of the day, my babies just wanted their mommy. Working seven days a week, not being there for their games, not volunteering at their schools, not being home for bedtime, that was not the message I wanted them to receive. That wasn't the life that I wanted to live. It didn't happen overnight, but that conversation with Cooper was pivotal towards my transformation. Now, I work 25 hours a week. I pick my boys up from school every day at three o'clock. I help with homework. I'm home for bedtime, and I've even coached a few of their little sports teams. But what if I had missed the message that day? What if I had just let it pass right by? It wasn't the universe screaming at me. It wasn't a tragic event. It wasn't traumatic. It wasn't an event at all, really. It was just a tiny whisper. If you're waiting for the universe to scream at you, to crush you, to traumatize you into a forced coercion of behavior change, you could be missing the messages it's sending you every day. The universe is constantly sending you little ideas, little reminders, little inspirations, just little whispers. But if you're not paying attention and you don't hear the whispers, and you never experience trauma so great that it kickstarts you towards transformation, you could be destined to live your entire life the exact same way you are today. And is it not reasonable to say living your life the exact same way you are today could also be tragic? So what do you want to change? Have you been meaning to live healthier, go to the gym? Do you wish you could stop smoking or drinking like my grandma? Do you wish you could spend more time with your kids? Stop fighting with your partner, go back to college, write a book, start a business, pick up a hobby. Whatever it is, what are you waiting for? If you never have a massive coronary, will you just not go to the gym? If you never get in a near fatal car accident, ever realize the precious time you have left with your kids? And if you never get a terminal diagnosis, will you write the book? We all have something that we're going to do when. When those major traumatic events happen, we are given the gift of perspective. That snarky comment from Cooper all those years ago was a moment of perspective shift for me. I'm not sure if it was timing or a combination of his cute little voice and my raging hormones, but it was enough for me to hear it and to say I was going to make a change. From that moment forward, it became my obsession to make sure that every decision I made let my kids know and my family know that they were the most important things in, in the world to me. So wouldn't it be amazing if you too could achieve this life-altering shift in perspective without having to deal with the pain of tragedy? Why well, yes, Hillary, that would be fabulous. How do we do that? <laughs> Great question. If you don't happen to already be extremely pregnant and very hormonal, you can slow down, unplug, be present. It's really hard to hear whispers when you're constantly on the go. You can journal, meditate, do yoga, pray, spend time alone, spend time in nature, spend time for self-care. I know, easier said than done. You can listen to the people around you. Pay attention to the patterns in their comments. It is likely that your loved ones are telling you exactly what you need to hear, but you're just not listening. Your whisper could come in the form of a song lyric, a movie plot, a conversation you overhear on the bus or in the lobby here today. Your whisper could come in a social media post that you almost scrolled right by, or a billboard you drive by every single day on your way to work but have never actually read. And given that you do hear the whisper, that you notice the passing fleeting comment, take action, take immediate action. Don't wait, don't stall, don't procrastinate. So I ask you again, what do you need to change? What would make your life better from this moment forward? If you're waiting for the universe to tell you it's time, I promise it is time. And maybe, just maybe, you were here today 
to hear your whisper.